Are you in the early stages of your music production journey? Do you search the internet for clear and solid advice on how to easily navigate and create in Logic Pro? Well, this is exactly the feedback I've been getting from my students at the Irish Institute of Music and Song. So in this video, I'm going to make a song from scratch, showing you the 15 steps you need to know before you start making music. By knowing these steps inside out, you will find it much easier to create your own music and begin upgrading your abilities from beginner to pro. This is what it looks like when you open up Logic for the first time. We can create a software instrument, an audio track, a guitar track, or a drummer track. Let's start with a software instrument using the default sound. And for the moment, let's not open up the library. So let's create that track. Our default sound is an electric piano. Beautiful. If we want to change that, we can go up to the top left hand corner and click on the library. Or we can use the shortcut Y to open and close it. Here you have a huge range of free sounds that come with Logic. You can click on these down arrows if you want to download them. But do keep in mind, they take up a lot of storage space. Let's go for a vintage electric piano, Wurlitzer Modern. You can press Command K so you can use your keyboard to play in the notes. Our other option is to press P to open up the piano roll. And if we select our tool to be a pencil tool, we can draw in notes. Make sure you change back to pointer tool if you want to edit the notes later. You can click on this space here to drag the cursor back to the beginning, or you can press enter and then space bar to play. Instead of dragging the playhead around all the time, we can click and drag on the section just above it to create a cycle range or a loop. So that sound keeps replaying and we can use the shortcut C to turn it on and off. Select over a range of four bars. Make sure I have a count in of four beats and the metronome's on so I can play in time. And we can hit the red button or press OR to record. You could click and drag to select all the notes and hit the Q over here or Q on your keyboard to quantize everything perfectly in time. And you could even bring down the strength a little bit if you wanted to. But in this case, let's quantize it just 16% for the tiny bit of latency between the keyboard and the computer. So this is feeling pretty slow. So what we can do is go up to the top and change the BPM and click and drag the BPM to become a little bit faster. Let's say 140. So I'm pretty happy with that start, but we need another instrument. Let's press P to close the piano roll and go to the top left to create another software instrument. This time, let's select the second tab in or press I, which opens up the inspector. Click on the right hand side here so that we open up our options of synths. If you've downloaded synths, they'll be shown in the AU instruments, but there's lots of great free ones that come with logic. Let's try alchemy, bass, acoustic, hard semi-acoustic, and or again to record in the bass. If we want to listen to one at a time, we can click on the headphones here to play just the bass back. Or we can hit the mute to only hear the piano. So these options look very similar to GarageBand. But if we want to make the full use out of Logic Pro, in the very top left corner, click on Logic Pro, Preferences, and select Advanced Tools. Once we turn on Show Advanced Tools and all our additional options are on, Logic looks a lot more like Logic and not GarageBand. So look here, we've got M for Mute, S for Solo. We have two tools here in the piano roll, but also in the main timeline window. We can go one step further. Command comma is a shortcut to open up our preferences. General, Editing, and at right mouse button, change this this to is assignable to a tool. Click on that. So now we have a third assignable tool in the piano roll and in the main timeline. Our normal click is the pointer tool. Command and click is our second tool here, which currently we have marquee tool. And then right click our two finger click is our scissors tool. Command comma to open up our preferences one more time. And back in editing, make sure we have pointer tool in tracks provides, fade tool, click zones. I'll show you why in just a minute. Create one more track by pressing the plus here and notice how our options look slightly different now. Because we have the advanced settings turned on, it now looks a little less like GarageBand. Let's select audio. I have my microphone plugged in into input two and let's create it. We can go to our L or circle here and pull it fully to the left. So the sound is only coming out our left ear. Let's press command D to duplicate that track and let's pan this one to the right. And notice how the panning also moves here in our inspector. bit better that time. If we solo the second one, it's only coming out our right ear. And solo the left one, it's only coming out our left ear. Command D for one more track and let's pan it down the middle. Lovely. So the vocals are a lot more thick because we've layers of them and they're panned around our head. 
I'm going to shorten this last vocal to half the length. Option, click and drag it across so it's duplicated twice. And I can edit one of these on their own. If I go to the top left and select region, more, and I can reverse this first region. But I haven't affected the second one. So we're editing by region. We can also transpose it by going up to transpose, clicking on the right hand side and pitching it up 12 semitones. Sounds a bit weird, but it works. And remember earlier in our preferences, when we selected fade tool click zones, when we go to the top left or top right of any audio track, we can fade it in. Sounds amazing. Once again with the inspector tab opened, in the middle we have audio effects. Click on this and let's go for reverb, chroma verb this time. We can edit the dry and the wet signal or we can click on the top to find presets that we like down here. Let's go for a hall, concert hall. Let's bring up the wet signal and decay time a little bit longer. Nice. Reverb is great for giving a bit more depth to a sound. If we go just below that other effect, we can click and add in another sound. Let's try modulation chorus, which is a great effect for widening vocals. Let's bring the mix up. Sounds pretty good. We can get rid of effects by clicking on its right hand side and selecting no plugin, or we can turn it off for a minute by selecting its left hand side. So it stays there if we need it for a later stage, but it isn't turned on. If you do have a couple of sounds that you like and you might want to use it again on multiple vocals, click on setting up here in the top left and we can save channel strip. And you could save this as a vocal demo. And when we save it and go to another vocal track, we can click on settings and load one of our presets down here. And if we click on vocal demo, it opens up the effects from our other channel. A really handy and cool trick. If you don't want to play in the MIDI notes and you don't want to sing in yourself, there is another option. In the top right hand corner, we have the loop browser or O is the shortcut. We can search different instruments, genres or descriptors to find the sound that we want. Let's go for beats and sort by tempo by just clicking on it. This clap hat topper sounds pretty good. So click and drag it in and it will automatically create a new audio track here at the bottom. Option click and drag so it happens twice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That reverse kick beat sounds pretty good. Let's drag that in as well. <laughs> that sounds really cool. Oh, to close the loop browser. And because our third tool is the scissors tool, we can two finger click to chop up the beats and edit them how we want. So let's get rid of the snare in this one. And don't forget to fade them in and out so there's no clicking sounds. And the same in the second half and fade them in. Let's command D, that audio track, take this kick, option click and drag down, and let's add it in at the end of the four bars. Command D, one more sound. Let's take that snare in the first loop, option click and drag it down, and let's add it in just at the end there, and fade it in and out. Snare light and kick small. That works so well. It's super useful to search these loops and find something that works for you. And I'd highly recommend chopping it up and make the rhythm fit exactly what you're looking for. It's all about getting creative. Option C to open up our color palette, select the bottom drum track, shift click to the top track and let's give them one color. So now all the tracks are color coordinated. We could grab all of our audio and MIDI, drag it across the bar 13, move the playhead to bar 13 as well. Option apostrophe, which puts a marker down in this section. Click on global tracks or G and we can name this whatever we want. Let's say chorus. And we can also give this a color, purple, perfect. So let's say we had eight bars of a verse, option apostrophe, color that green and an intro before that, color yellow and end the chorus after eight bars, option apostrophe. Back to another verse. Now we've organized our project a little bit better. Let's go one step further. Select vocal C, shift click to vocal hum A, shift command G, and now we have a vox hum group track. So we can close or open that group to organize all the vocals together. And we could press X to open up the mixer, or if you have two monitors, command two will open up the mixer as another window. So you can put it on your other screen. Option click and drag across our reverb. So now the reverb is in our vocal hum group. Sounds pretty cool. We can also shift click and shift command G so we have a drum group. And now we can fold these down to have our project a little bit neater. And you also have the advantage of putting effects on the full group as one. Go to our sends bus and we can select any bus here. Let's go for number 10. Our bus 10 automatically opens up here in our inspector. We could also click X and we could also find our bus 10 here. Option, click and drag across our chroma reverb from our vocal group onto that bus 10. And let's make sure we have the dry effects down to zero because we only want the wet signal from our bus. Solo the bus so nothing's currently playing until we move this meter up. So click and drag.
And let's name this bus by changing aux 6 to verb. So let's go to our vocal hum group, add bus 10, which is the reverb, and let's turn that up a bit and listen to the vocal and the keys on their own with no reverb. And then when we add the bus in, we're hearing that layer of reverb on top of the dry signal. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm surprised. Open up the library. Let's search for a wah. Maybe wah horns. Let's record that in. It sounds so mad. Add an effect going filter, auto filter. By changing the cutoff, we can hear it opening up over time. So as the cutoff opens up, it's allowing more high frequencies through. And there's a way we can automate this. A, to open up automation, or you can click this button here. Currently we have volume selected here in yellow. So if you want to change the volume, you can click points and you can make the volume go up and down. But let's leave the volume where it is for the minute. Click on volume, go down to auto filter, and let's select the cutoff. So now when we draw points in, we're selecting how open or closed the cutoff is going to be at each particular point. And this is going to really make the horns sound a little bit more alive. So we could keep it really simple, draw a point at the end and a point at the start and have the cutoff open over time. Not too bad, but how about let's make the filter open and close really quickly while the note plays. Let's do the same on the second one. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. Put the playhead to the start of bar 13. Click and drag over these automation points. Command C to copy. Click on bar 14. Command V to paste that automation over it. Let's do the same again to bar 15 this time. Command V. Nice. And we have an extra note there. And now the automation is giving a new lease of life to these horns. Let's get the scissors tool and actually get rid of the first of each of those horns. Grab all of these, control B to bounce it out as a new audio. Let's give it its own color. Let's shorten it to the very first two beats. So you could do the frell thing and have four beats if you wanted. Which is pretty cool. Let's grab the end of this one as well. And we can move that to the bar before. Interesting. Or grab it and hit it twice. Or maybe four times. We can go File, Project Alternatives, New Alternative. And we can save this as tutorial number two. So let's say we delete these horns, erase all that. We don't want them anymore. Delete this, all gone. Now later in the project, if I want to go back to that old project style, what we can do is go File, Project Alternatives, and open up our old project alternative. So if I click on this, we open back up with the wah horns in the project. So if you decide to bring your project in one direction, but you're not 100% certain it's exactly what you want, saving project alternatives will save you so much time and hassle. So definitely look into that file, bounce, our project, our section. So this will export our looped section from bar 12 to the end of bar 23. So you can export it as an MP3, or if we click the PCM, we can change it from WAVE or to AIFF, whichever sample rate you're working at and whatever resolution you're working at as well. My projects are 44K and 24-bit. We can change the name at the top, mix A, click bounce, it'll render out, and that's it. Go to the folder that you saved it to, and it's ready to go. There are seven more of my favorite tips that I didn't mention in this video, and you can check them out right here. It has lots more information on panning, automation, and general logic tips that will change your life. Trust me, they definitely changed mine. Hope you keep them well. Cheers.